OK, so if you didn't um, get the introductions, etc. yesterday, um, I'm Sam Harrison and I'm the Student Life Coordinator for Cardiff Met Students Union. Uh, been in the role for three and a half years now, and my emphasis is to try to enhance your student learning experience um, as partner students studying across the world. Um, what we um, try to get across from these this week is what it's like to be a student studying in Cardiff, but also mirroring that experience for everybody across the world. So you know that the Students' Union is there for you during and through your journey and out of as well, as we don't just say goodbye to you at the end. We're there for you um, throughout that period. Um, so this week um, is Monday to Friday, 9 to 11. Uh, this session is specifically for selected student representatives only. So you have been recommended by your institutions uh, because you've probably got some experience of what it's like to be a student representative in your own institutions and or with Cardiff Met as well. So the session is going to be hosted by our two esteemed colleagues, Ruth and Holly from the Quality Assurance Agency today. It's an absolute pleasure to have them on board and you should be really privileged to have this as well. Um, and it's engaging with your learning communities and it's going to discuss some things about being a student rep and what it's like across the world, as well as some information about the Quality Assurance Agency as well. Um, if people do need to dip in and out, that's absolutely fine, but um, just, just let us know. The chat section is for you to engage. Um, you can also turn on your mics and we're, we want to hear from you as well, as much as possible. That's what it's about. Um, but there will be specific polls, etc., which will be facilitated by Ruth and Holly. So I'm going to hand over to, uh, to Holly and Ruth. So thank you very much. And um, we hope you enjoy the session this morning. Thank you, Sam. Um, good morning, everyone. It's very nice to be here today. Um, before we dive into our um, session, we'll just do um, quickly introduce ourselves. Um, so I'm Holly Thomas, I'm a Quality Enhancement Specialist at QAA. Um, and before I was at QAA, I actually worked in a, in a students union in a similar role um, to Sam. Um, so I'm really pleased to be here um, engaging with you all today. And I'm joined by Ruth. Hi everyone, um, my name is Ruth Birchall. Um, I'm, a, I'm an old lag, as we say in England, in the higher education world. Um, I've got about 30, uh, well, 27 years experience in higher education, working in institution in a variety of roles um, and also um, in policy roles as well, such as that at QAA. And my current, my current role, which I'm quite new in, is as a quality specialist in a global team and it's quite a new team so at the moment I'm shaping my role but one of the things I'm very keen to look at is the TNE rep community um, as we go forward so today's of special interest to me just to, just to have a look at some of the themes that come out of our discussions today but I'm really looking forward to working with you all. Hey so um, Ruth and I are going to do a bit of a, a double act this morning um, so some of the things that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about what the role of QAA um, is. As Sam said, we want really want to, to talk to you about your learning community wherever you're studying around the world and how we can support you to engage with your learning community as a student rep and just really find out from you what it's like to be a student representative um, at Cardiff Metropolitan um, University. So as we go through the presentation today, there are going to be some activities so if you do have a device like a phone or an iPad or something or you can just use the device that you're using at the moment we'll have some links for you to, to click on and, and some codes for you to enter to engage with some of our polls um, so before we do that though we would really like to know um, where you're joining us from today so what I'm going to do is I'll just put the map up you can use that QR code if you've got a phone to um, scan and get to the link. If not, I will just pop the um, link into the chat and you can mark on the map where you are joining us from today. You'll be able to see that that little um, marker in Cardiff is, is myself. So that's where I'm joining you from.
So you can use the uh, the um, plus sign in the pink circle to uh, add to your place on the map. If you haven't been able to access the link, please, um, please let us know. One tiny question. Um, yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm sorry, hi. this was a bit abrupt. Um, should we log in or sign up or we can just? You should just be able to click the link, but if it's if it's not working, we'll mm -hmm. just um, we can all just share where we're, where we're from today. If you um, you might need to zoom out on the map using the arrows in the bottom right hand corner. Because it will it will show just the the place that's first been that has been marked at first. Yeah, OK, got it. it. It was it was my fault. It was lagging. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, no, don't worry at all. OK, got it. OK, I'll give you all a, a couple more minutes, um, but if you if you would prefer, you could just unmute yourself and tell us where you're joining us from today. It's just so we have an idea um, of where you're all studying, really. Hi, my name is Mithak. Um, uh, I'm from Oman. Fantastic. Basically, I'm working and contacting you guys from the work, which is uh, uh, in the center of Oman and nearby the Saudi Arabia borders. Great. Thank you for sharing where you're from. Does anyone else want to, to tell us where we're from if they can't use the map? Morocco, I can see in the chat. Sorry, go on, go ahead. I'm sorry, you're very quiet. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? I think the problem is with my PC, that's why. Do you hear me? Yes, that's much better. Okay. Thank you. That's it. I'm for I'm with Mithak on the same institution. Fantastic, yeah. thank you. Hi. Hello. Where are you joining us from? My name is Shahad Ali Ahmadi from Gulf College, Oman. I am with Halima and Mithaq. Fantastic. Thank you. Hello, Holy. Hello, Ruth. Welcome. Hi. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine as well. I'm joining you from uh, MUBS from Lebanon, Beirut. Fantastic, thank you. I was going to attempt the link, but I don't know what I'm doing wrong. The plus sign is not working for me. Um, but anywho, I'm Fatimi and I'm I'm from Greece. I represent City Unity College. Fantastic, thank you. <laughs> OK, does anyone else want to share before we move on to the next? Um, uh, yes. Hi, I'm Noor, and I'm also from Gulf College, Oman, Mecca. Fantastic, thank you. Okay. Hi, uh, how are you doing? Uh, it's me, that's Hi. And uh, I have Jennifer Teresa Pereira here. Um, we are from Sri Lanka, uh, and uh, we're studying at ICV to Colombo. Great, thank you. Fantastic. OK, thank you so much for those of you that have, have shared with us. Um, 
I know we haven't managed to mark it on the map, but after the session today, we can mark that on the map. And it was just to show you that you're you really are part of a, a, a global community. So if I just go back to my slide. OK, so I'm just going to hand over to Ruth now. Let Holly off the hook now because it's horrible when you when your padlets don't work and stuff. So it's um, it's fine. It's great to see you all here. Um, and from pretty much from you know different corners of the planet, and it does go to show how vast our HE community is and what you are part of. And it's so important for me personally in HE that we are part of this global community. And you guys as reps are part of this rep community within that global community as well. And, you know, there's people doing what you do across the whole world. So sometimes it can be a, lo a lonely place being a rep. Um, but actually, it's, it's one of those very cheesy statements where actually everyone is doing the same as you in different corners of the world. So you don't necessarily always need to feel lonely. So. We're going to talk just a little bit about QAA and how do we support students? Um, and it's just worth saying that, um, oh, Holly, if you can just move us on or whoever's moving us on, brilliant. So basically, student engagement is intrinsic to everything we do at QAA. Um, we're a long time champion of student engagement. Um, back in 2008, we had um, student reviewers on our review panels. So we go around universities reviewing quality and standards. And that's actually our mission is to stay safeguard standards um, and improve the quality um, of UK higher education wherever it's delivered. And that's where you guys come in. As I've said, student engagement's at the heart of our work um, and we work to encourage institutions to enhance their student engagement practice, to have students on governance committees um, in, as part of their teaching and learning, obviously, um, but also in non-curricular activities as well, so that there's a student voice at every layer of delivery um, to enhance that student experience. At QAA, we have something called the Student Strategic Advisory Committee, um, and that is part of our governance process. So, you know, even at QAA, we have stu that student voice informing our work, making sure that we're not going massively left field on something that's not actually going to be of use to students. Um, in terms of how we work, we, as I've said, we, we review institutions and in Wales particularly, um, we have something called the UK Quality Code that institutions have to abide by, and I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. So we review institutions, but also we do provide advice and guidance to help institutions enhance their practice as well. And that's part of why we're here today, because we're very much looking at how student voice can enhance practice. How can we continuously make sure things get better? Um, in and I just wanted to say a bit about the quality code, which I think is on the next slide. Holly, is that right? Oh, we're talking a bit about the global community next. Sorry, I've got ahead of myself there. So this is just emphasising that point that you're part of this global community. Um, we know that there's 188 providers across the UK providing TNE, and TNE stands for Transnational Education. Um, hopefully you've all heard that term before, but if you don't, um, it's worth bearing in mind. And those 188 offer TNE programmes in 52 countries, and you are part of a community of 488,095 students um, across across the global HE. UK community, which sounds a bit weird and backwards, but hopefully you understand what I mean there. Holly. So this is the quality code, and the reason I keep on about the quality code is because I was part of the team that um, wrote the chapter B5, which really set a benchmark for UK education, and B5 was basically the first UK-wide benchmark for institutions 
to show that they were undertaking student engagement properly. So they were doing more than just asking for feedback. Um, they were actually engaging students throughout, throughout their processes and their practices. The UK Quality Code has evolved. Um, and whilst we don't have the expectations in the same way, there is um, a core practice now that all institutions have to abide by. And that is to undertake student engagement to ensure a high quality education for students. Um, and so all institutions, including yours, Cardiff Met, um, have to show us and show the regulators that they are actively engaging with students um, in all aspects of their delivery. In terms of the UK Quality Code, something that you might find useful is the advice and guidance that sits with it. Now, there is a piece of advice and guidance specifically called um, student engagement. And within that, there are some core principles that are meant to enable institutions to have kind of a framework, really, for effective student engagement. And you might find this useful to look at when you're discussing um, in your roles as reps with academics or with um, governance teams, however, however you're working. So if you haven't had a chance to look at that, you might want to um, take a look at it. You can find it on our website under quality code, under advice and guidance, under student engagement. It's actually quite, quite an easy piece to find um, and, and you might find that interesting. The interesting thing as well about the UK Quality Code is that it's now used differently across the UK. So in England, it's very much advice and guidance. But for Wales, where your where your institution is and for Scotland and Northern Ireland, um, the UK Quality Code still forms part of that regulatory structure. So they do have to meet those core practices around student engagement. Holly. Thanks, Ruth. Um, so following on from Ruth talking about the UK Quality Code there, there's a couple of key terms that we use a lot at, at QAA and you might hear throughout your student experience, whether that's as a rep or um, as part of your, your study. And these two key terms are academic quality and academic standards. Um, and it's really important that you just know how this relates to your experience as a student and as a student rep. So when we talk about academic quality, just start to think about everything that happens in between when you research about which university you're going to go to, whether that's through maybe your, your school or your independent research to the point of leaving university and perhaps getting a, a, a graduate job. Every part of that journey has to be quality assured, and that's one of the reasons why we exist as, a, as an organisation, as QAA. And that's why the quality code um, represents different parts of your student experience. For example, Ruth mentioned the advice and guidance, and that um, includes topics such as assessment and, and course design and student engagement as well. So simply our definition of academic quality is the term referring to how and how well higher education providers manage teaching and learning opportunities to help you progress and to help you succeed. So academic quality is that term that is supporting you to get your qualification. So how does this relate to your role as being a student, um, being a student and being a student representative? Because student voice and student engagement has a huge role to play in improving academic quality, in making that experience the best it can be for yourself and the students around you that you represent in your role. So if you think about any of the times that you've taken on feedback from students and you've taken that forwards to your provider, that is an example of you helping to improve the quality of the student experience. If you've ever filled in a survey or maybe a module evaluation, all of that feedback is so valuable in improving um, academic quality and the student experience. So I hope that today as we talk through some of these different terms and we talk about your experience, 
you'll see how fundamental your role is in improving um, academic quality, both at your institution and also um, around the world. So it's really important that you keep telling us your views and telling us about your experience. And the other key term is academic standards. So I just want to talk about why they're important to you as well. So when we're thinking about standards, I just want you to think a bit about your your qualification, which is the outcome of all of your studies, the outcome of all of that hard work you've put in to get your qualification at the end of your higher education journey. Um, and academic standards relate to your qualification being current, being relevant and being comparable to other courses in the same subject wherever they're delivered um, around the world from a UK higher education provider. So and your qualification should reflect on the level of teaching and learning expected for that qualification. So, for example, you know, you'll get a um, undergraduate degree like a Bachelor's of Arts. You could study for a master's degree or a postgraduate qualification like a um, master's degree or a PhD. That award reflects the teaching and learning that you have experienced. So your academic standards are set by the awarding the organisation awarding your qualification. So in this case, that's Cardiff Metropolitan University. Um, the standards must meet national requirements and it is the responsibility of your awarding organisation. So in this um, context, Cardiff Metropolitan to make sure that your qualification has value over time. So we're here in 2022. Um, so anyone who achieves a qualification in 2022 should have the same value as someone who achieved that in in 2012 or 2032, looking ahead 10 years into the future. And again, you have a really important role to play in this as a student and as a student rep. For example, you might have been involved in designing some assessment or being involved in giving some feedback on assessment or design of your course. You might be asked about changes to your course. And again, you might have provided some feedback through through surveys that are then reflected on by your provider to improve the quality and the standards of your student experience. So again, I hope you can see that your feedback builds into this wider picture of um, academic standards and academic quality. So I'm going to hand back over to Ruth now. I'm pretty sure I drew the short straw with this section. So we're going to um, talk about modes of learning. And this has really come to the fore since the dreaded word, the pandemic, um, that we are all still experiencing in, in one shape or another. And um, speaking to friends and colleagues around the world, um, there's very different pictures going on in different countries. So some of you may well be in a lockdown, some of you are almost back to normal. Um, some of you are in a weird hybrid and you're not quite sure where you're, where, what you're doing. Um, but this has resulted in a huge change, a, a real step change actually, in how higher education is delivered and received actually. Um, and I'm sure that you're all aware um, that well, I hope you are, otherwise you probably haven't been studying at all over the last two years. Um, but, um, I'm, you know, it's been delivered online. Um, and I think this has presented challenges to reps, especially um, in a way in being able to gauge feedback. Um, but hopefully, you know, we're getting to a point where it's becoming slightly easier. It's becoming a new normal, which seems to be a, a buzzword that's going around at the moment. But these modes of learning obviously represent different ways of teaching, different ways of receiving that education and ranging from online, practical, face to face, um, blended learning, hybrid learning. There are so many terms. Um, so what we're going to do is just run through some of those terms and what they actually mean. And forgive me, Holly has given me some great definitions, which I'm probably going to read word for word so I don't mix them up and confuse everyone. But it's just to refresh us. And then we're going to shut up for a bit and let you guys um, tell us about, you know, what's most important, uh, the most important factors in your learning, however it's delivered. So here we go. So interactive learning very much about two way engagement. Um, so, for example, between yourself and your peers or academics. And this 
interactive learning can be online or offline. Um, but it's it's you often hear about interactive. This session was described as being interactive, although I feel we may have talked to you for quite a long time. Um, synchronous learning. So that's learning that takes place with participants all engaging with material in real time, although not necessarily in the same place. So, for example, some students may participate on site, whilst others may participate remotely. Asynchronous, and this is the one that always gets me. I always, I always get confused on this one. So this one describes learning that does not occur in the same place or at the same time for a whole cohort or class. So you can access resources and communicate um, at any time and you're not restricted to accessing learning at a specific time. So, you know, someone might want to access it at eight o'clock in the morning and then if you're a, a night owl, you might want to access it at two in the morning. But it enables students in theory to learn at their own pace and in their own um, time. So collaborative digital learning and so in terms of digital learning an educational approach to learning that involves groups of learners working together um, via digital means so to um, yeah via digital means and then finally flexible learning using different modes of studies and technologies um, to enable students to manage their studies around other commitments. So example, if we were to record or we are recording this session, someone who couldn't make it could access it later on and still receive that learning. Um, but you could probably argue, did they feel part of it? So I think, you know, there's different discussions to be had around these, these different types of learning. And what we'd like you to do now is actually tell us what are the most important factors in your learning. Um, so this is talking about you as a student rather than you as a rep at the moment. I believe that's right, isn't it, Holly? Um, so this is talking about your personal experience. Um, so fingers crossed for the menti Mentimeter. I'm gonna hand over to Holly now and off we go. Thanks, Ruth. Um, so there is a QR code on there, but it might be easier if um, you just go to menti.com and you can use the code 2181 and 4931. It looks like somebody's already been in, um, which is really good to see. So what we will see is as you put in what the most important factors are for your learning, the bars will will change and we'll see what you think is most important to you and what is perhaps least important. So currently interactive is number one and flexible is also number one, and we can see that asynchronous is currently the least important for you. So I'll give you a few moments to um, fill this in. Interactive is just uh, overtaken into the lead. OK, so um, we can see that interactive is currently um, in the lead and asynchronous is the well, is is the last one by quite a long way, actually. Um, so if anyone would like to tell us why they chose one of these, um, please do do unmute and tell us a little bit more about why this type of learning is important to you or maybe not important to you. And I, I would like to say at this stage is that um, this is an example of a of a poll that you could do with students in your learning community as a student rep to hear from them a little bit about how they find their different types of learning. So I'm gonna 
be quiet and hand over to you just for a few minutes and see if anyone would like to tell us why they've selected the answers they have. We'll be really interested to hear. Um, I could give it a go. Um, go for it. My first choice was interactive, second was collaborative, uh, and third was synchronous because well, I, I think nothing beats the classroom as a whole. So although although things have changed, I think it's for me at least it's, it's very nostalgic, you know, going by the classroom and, and watching my lectures physically. But um, I think interactive learning without interactive learning, we wouldn't be able to do what we're doing with Cardiff in other countries. Um, so I, I think it's the hallmark of our generation being able to study abroad whilst being in our home countries. For some of us, it's incredibly difficult to um, to leave, and I th and, and I think that's very limiting. You know, uh, seeking better education, higher education should not be limited to few who can, you know, practically and economically financially um, sustain it. Uh, so interactive learning is incredibly important, especially considering it gives people the means to access education, higher education easier. It's just that I think now with COVID, we were mostly online, mostly digital, which is a bit sad, although it has helped during lockdowns. Um, I think now that we're we're starting to get back to normal. Um, we're implementing hybrid learning, which is amazing because whoever can visit campus will come on campus. But at the same time, it's it's a bit convenient, I think, uh, and people use it as a form of convenience. And at least in my um, in my experience, we're very few in our classroom. Most are on, most are online. Um, so I'm a bit nostalgic for actual physical learning. I do not know when that will come back into fashion, <laughs> but up until now, it's I think. It's been amazing seeing how quickly and efficiently the. Our educators have switched from fully physical to fully digital and then blended learning, and I think interactive has been, you know, a constant between those, um, you know, um, transitions. I blabbered on. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. That was uh, a, such a detailed and fantastic answer. You've really considered really? all those different types of um, learning. So thank you very much for that. And I, I, I really, really like what you said about um, how these modes of learning being, being able to study abroad is a really good access for higher education. So I, th I think you that was a, a fantastic answer. So thank you. Um, I can't see your name. Do you have your hand up? I'm sorry, but please do jump in. Yes, so uh, I would like to give a, a feedback about uh, my choices. Absolutely, thank you. So uh, I chose uh, interactive definitely for the first uh, choice. Because, uh, like my colleague said, it is uh, imperative to have interactive learning in order to reach uh, uh, high-end in institutions like uh, Cardiff uh, from here in Lebanon. You know, uh, we are uh, passing in a huge economical crisis and inflation besides COVID. So uh, we are, uh, but we're good, we're adapting. So uh, we're trying to, to do our best. So my second uh, choice was flexible because uh, here we have a lot of electricity cuts, a lot of internet cuts. So I uh, I would be glad to be able to to study at 2 a.m. in the morning. Maybe maybe the electricity will come at 2 a.m. I don't know. So um, uh, that was my second choice. Uh, also, collaborative is very 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 important. I I feel that uh, it is the most three uh, choices, top three choices. Uh, also synchronous. Nothing beats the classroom. Nothing beats the classroom, but uh, here we cannot uh, access our campuses because of all of these problems and high gas price. So uh, definitely interactive learning. 
Thank you. Thank you very much for sharing. And I think something that, that's come through both of your, your answers so far is that the types of um, learning are really important for your personal circumstances. Um, and I've really seen that come through your answers. And I think that's a really important point to, to reflect on. Um, does anyone else have anything they would like to, to share on, on this poll so far? Go for it. I guess. Oh, wait. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, my first choice was collaborative because my experience here at Golf College first started um, when I actually um, got into collaborate with um, teachers and um, get into what what is the college is basically about and how we should like collaborate with students if there is like activities that I can do for them and help um, and collaborate with these teachers. Till now, actually, I really appreciate what they have done to me and how they encourage me to do that. So I really, um, yeah, it's it's like the most important one to me is collaborative because I also can collab like with um, higher higher levels than mine, not only me, um, and also like with the administrators and um, sharing that with student voice got me to just know that um, collaboration is very needed in, in this area. Uh, my second one was interactive. Um, so the third one, I really want to talk about the third one, is flexibility. Um, because um, we have a lot of like different people who actually have like others' opinion in my class, uh, my classroom or my colleagues, they have like different ideas about the studies each year you get like higher each year it's going to be difficult um, and some of them are not flexible with that but to me um, I always say like be ready for it because if you're not flexible you're not going to make it at all so uh, I really think is flexibility is also um, very needed at that point that's it thank you Thank you very much. Again, another another fantastic and, and really detailed answer. Um, OK, so does anyone else have anything to add before we move on to the to the next one? I'll just add real quick. Uh, I won't take up too much time. I was uh, the majority as well. Interactive is uh, obviously very essential, I believe. Um, as the previous cohorts also explained, I'm in total agreement with that. And then secondly, flexible is also rather important to me because, I mean, our college uh, does have an absence system where uh, in place where you're not allowed to uh, make more than six absences in a lesson. So otherwise you fail the lesson, you have to retake the lesson. Um, and so I believe that, yeah, I mean, now with the situation, I've had a lot of situations with classmates that um, had to be absent due to Corona more than once. Um, and uh, yeah, it would be much easier for them to be able to access the material online uh, after afterwards. And uh, yeah, that's just my part, pretty much just real for it. Yeah. Thank you very much for sharing that. That's that's really interesting as well. Another another fantastic point to make and I think that um, reflecting on interactive collaborative and flexible is the the top three from this group those are certainly as we can see important factors for your learning but I'm sure those are skills that you're engaging with as a rep as well to to engage with your your cohort so thank you very much for that I'm going to move on to the the next one now um, OK, Ruth, I think it's over to you for for this one. So this is you thinking of yourselves as reps now. So what we want to do is um, we're going to we're going to try a Padlet again. Um, and this is this is just for you guys to sort of tap away and let us know what's the most effective method of engaging with your academic tutors. So in the current climate, think about yourself right now, not necessarily in COVID, right now. Um, and then what's the most effective method of engaging with your peers right now? So some of you have said you can go to campus 
partly. Some of you have said you're completely online still. Some of you said, you know, you want to do this flexible approach. Does that echo in how you act as a rep? So um, if Holly, you can open up the Padlet. And we'll see if this one. Yes, I've put the link into the chat. Um, if if it doesn't if it doesn't work, we can have a bit of a, a conversation, or you can put it in the chat box. I think this one's all right, Holly. This looks like it's working better for me. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just tap away. Um, it we won't just uh, sit and watch you write. It's a it's a little bit of a weird one. So. <laughs> We'll just see what comes up on the screen. You'll oh, see as well, you'll have the opportunity to click the heart with each of the comments that go in. So if someone's put something else in that you really agree with, you can um, you can show that you agree with that <laughs> by clicking the heart. Could you do us a favour as well, is that if um, you can just put the country you're in, just so it gives us an idea of, it, you know, depending on your individual situations, it's, it's um, differing or not, perhaps. You can also put if you've not been able to engage as well, because that's also interesting to us and that's absolutely fine. Um, so that that will be interesting to Sam in particular as well. If you really struggled and you, you haven't done it or haven't been able to do it, that's that's OK too. Can see some great answers coming through. Thank you. Great, I can see that um, some people are using the, the heart function so you can see where you agree with each other. That's an interesting point about um, it depends if they're serious and not easily distracted online. Who who put that comment? Because that's received a couple of likes and I'm just interested to expand that point a little bit further. Um, I, I, I did that. Um, based on my experience in my campus, there are some people who get easily distracted and cannot focus online. So they don't benefit from the online meeting or work that we do. So I prefer to work with them offline and it would be more beneficial to both of us. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Um, I, I'm on the neurodiverse spectrum myself and I find online learning, I'm doing a master's at the moment and I find it incredibly difficult actually to maintain concentration online. Um, and I think that's just a it was just a really interesting point and it just it resonated with me as a student as well. So I just I just found that in, I sometimes as well, you just want to chat 
you know, you don't always want to talk about your learning. And I find sometimes in that rep role as well, people will use you just as a sounding board and a chat. They might not necessarily want to talk about repping. I know when I was um, at the Dyson Institute that, that our reps were certainly experiencing that in the height of the pandemic. Um, almost acting as a you know a buffering sort of counselling service in a way as well so it's an interesting point thank you thank you great okay so in the interest of time um there's some really interesting points here, and I think Sam will find this particularly interesting um, when training reps, for example. Um, so I think this, this how we can use this feedback is again to enhance that practice for the student union. Um, Sam, I, I don't know if you want to say a couple of words on that just before we move on, because I'm aware that we, we'll need to move on. Yeah, um, some really interesting points, and it, it looks like it's over more informal learning environments where it's um, the discussions a little bit more candid, a little bit um, less um, in terms of well, less professional in a sense, just just a bit more conversational style. Um, and I think that kind of takes away the that hierarchical um, point as well. Um, and I think being a rep um, is important to get the student voice collaboratively. And um, sometimes in certain situations and environments that some some students aren't honest with their reps about what goes on and um i think what we've got here is is you know very much um informal learning environments and i think that's something that we can definitely take on board um going forward um so yeah look it, very much similar to how you like to learn actually with your interactive and your collaborative approaches so yeah. that's them being echoed in in engagement with your peers and academic tutors so yeah some really similar messages coming across and um yeah something for us to really work out um, going forward so really thank you for the for the feedback for this is brilliant yeah i think i think definitely it's that informal online voice as well um could be useful um certainly as we're in this new normal um it was interesting that you know a lot of you like to interact with your tutors face to face um so I, I think it's possibly some nice, some nice guidance for new reps there, Sam, maybe coming your way. <laughs> oh, Sam's frozen. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, no, no, I'm, I'm still here. No, absolutely. Yeah, and certainly some uh, some things. And I think one of the points is face to face it still has extreme value. And um, I, I think developing that campus culture and that community has been difficult since um, since the pandemic as well. And um, I think getting that transition back into some sort of I know it's a hybrid approach, but still having those face to face discussions are of significant value for the student experience and for voicing um, your you know, either concerns or your all positive feedback as well. So no, some really great stuff for for us to look at here. So again, massive thanks for facilitating this and giving your answers is brilliant. Thanks, so I think we're going to move on. Um, Holly, Holly's going to talk to us um, about learning communities now. So um, learning community is really the basis of our discussions today and the, the polls that we've done so far. So this is why we've been through the various different definitions and heard from you about what, what's most important in your learning experience and how you engage with your peers and your academic um, tutors. So your learning and teaching experience helps to build your learning community. So I want you to just keep those answers to the, the previous polls in the in the forefront of your of your heads as we um, talk a little bit about learning community. So teaching and learning can create a learning and social community that's often described as a, a sense of belonging. So that sort of feeling that you belong to the, the institution, that you identify as a maybe a Cardiff Metropolitan student or you identify to your, your local college. So I want us to just start thinking about what you think of your own learning community and what makes you feel like you have a, a part in that learning community. Is it that you are a student? Is it that you are a rep? Is it that those face to face interactions and those online interactions build that sense of belonging? And there are so many spaces 
that your learning community can build in. For example, at this at this event today, we're here as a, a global community of, of students at Cardiff Metropolitan University. You might build your sense of community through doing um, group assessment. I noticed that on the previous activity, someone put teamwork down as a way of interacting with, with their peers. Um, you might build that sense of community through your um, students' unions, like through the work that, that Sam does. Um, there are so many ways that that community can build. So we want to dig into what some of those are. And given that the the move to sort of digital learning and blended learning and hybrid learning, what we know is the learning community has sort of taken a different shape over the past few years. So we have we've had to learn to build that community in a different way. So we saw on the previous um, activity how important those face to face interactions are, but we've had to sort of work out how we can replicate that same feeling of belonging that you would get from a face-to-face -face conversation by doing that online through interactive learning, through collaborative learning, um, through synchronous learning. So I guess what we want to know from you as well is where do you find the set, the learning community to be the strongest? Is it in that digital space or is it in that face-to-face -face space or is it a combination of these two things that builds that community? So what we're going to do now is just to, to dig into your learning community a little bit more. Uh, we'd like to know from you, uh, what does being a Cardiff Metropolitan student mean to you and your student experience? So you can reflect on your role as a student, on your role as a rep, sorry, and also um, your position as a student. And also what makes you feel part of the Cardiff Met learning community? Is it the, the event? Today, does that make you feel part of the community? Is it the daily interactions you have with your academic tutors? Is it the fact that you know you're working towards a Cardiff Metropolitan University award? So we just want to reflect on that a little bit now. So you'll see there's another code um, on the screen now for the Mentimeter. So if you just pop that into menti.com again, the first question that appears on the screen is, um, what does being a Cardiff Met student mean to you and your student experience? You'll have the opportunity to answer that question and then it will ask you the next one. So uh, you can just put in any words or phrases that come to mind um, when you reflect on this question. So I will just pause there and give you a moment to um, go to the Mentimeter. And then as we go along, as we've started to have some answers come through, we'll have a, a little bit of a chat about those. Fantastic, I'm reassured it's working because someone has already put something in. So when you're doing it, if, if someone's put something that you agree with, for example, assessments, you can put in assessments as well. And the more popular phrases will get um, bigger. So we'll see what's most important to this group. Thank you for those of you that put something in already. That wasn't you, Sam, writing partner events. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I might like it, though, that's for sure. <laughs> OK, fantastic. So we've got tutor interactions, online events, learning materials, um, assessments, partner events and learning so far. Higher standards just come through, direct communication, 
international experience. He's a fantastic teamwork, goal setting, brilliant debate and discussion. I think again, something that's quite clear from this is that this group really values the interactivity and the collaboration that's coming through with, with all of the submissions so far. OK, so international experience has come through as the most important and higher standards at the moment. Does anyone want to reflect on why they popped that into the Mentimeter? Actually, I did put uh, international experience. Fantastic. Uh, I believe uh, we definitely need international experience wherever we are because uh, the world is getting uh, smaller and smaller every day. So we need to cope with everything, is, uh, everything that's going on. So um, we need to get to know new people. We need to, to learn different ways of learning. We need to um, to uh, to exchange cultures and uh, Cardiff is uh, definitely making things easier. Thank you for sharing that. That's that's a fantastic point, and I think that comes back to you being part of this this global community of Cardiff Metropolitan students. I can see someone else has got their hand up. I'm sorry, I can't see you because my screen's very small. Please jump in. Um, because I'm new to, to getting into the course and this is the first uh, collaboration that I did um, with you guys so I'm really flattered to be and also I wrote uh, student engagement uh, which basically um, um, the first thing that I heard from the, the head of our committee that um, Cardiff Metropolitan is also insisting to to have student engagement um, from uh, their partners university so they always tell us this word <laughs> this sentence um, yeah basically this is the, the the main thing that I really wanted to share great that's fantastic thank you um, so that's what we've we've got for the first one so here we had what makes you feel part of the Cardiff Met learning community so Oh, I have a feeling this one. Oh, it should it should be on the same link. Oh, yes, it's just updated. So first on this one, we had um, teaching and learning opportunities is what makes you feel part of the Cardiff Met Learning Community is the first one. And we had working closely with other students on your course as the um, as the last one. So does anyone want to reflect on why they might have chosen um, teaching and learning opportunities? Or does anyone, oh, I can see a hand, go for it. Um, I actually couldn't vote because I was struggling with my cat and she spilled coffee all over me. Oh, so, no. <laughs> um, I, I am so incredibly sorry. I'm going to. It's okay, okay. Don't worry. My cat uh, is uh, asleep somewhere. <laughs> she's wide awake uh, <laughs> and she's going to jump on me again. Um, so I didn't vote, but I have a very clear idea in my head. Um, I think just being able to you know, acquire all these teaching and learning opportunities that we otherwise wouldn't be able to in our home country. Um, both due to the fact that these opportunities are, are just simply not, cannot be found here. Um, and the fact that we ourselves can't reach them. Um, it, it's really important because as I said before, um, you know, teaching and learning and higher education shouldn't be limited to a certain few. Um, oh my lord, I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, it, they shouldn't be limited to a certain few. And um, personally, I come from, I was raised abroad and coming to Greece really, I, I struggled with the transition. 
um, and being able to study again in a uh, UK context was a blessing and being able to do that through City Unity College was was even better because uh, our tutors there really help us engage with Cardiff in so many different ways mm -hmm. and I've done two uh, partner events, two research cafes with Cardiff and it was just wonderful being able to interact with tutors there and students there uh, and it really is a blessing. Um, but the other thing I want to, I'm so sorry, uh, touch upon is being able to interact with our tutors themselves, being able to, mm -hmm. them also being willing to share their knowledge and their expertise. And um, I study psychology and that is very important in our field. Knowledge sharing, it, it's just a gift. And people, our tutors especially, being so willing to give us more than their, uh, let's say, job description um, entails is is wonderful. And yeah, that's what I wanted to touch upon because we don't really have that in Greece. Uh, in public universities, knowledge is treated as a sort of like something you you need to deserve to. I can't. I don't really find the perfect word for it, but. It's uh, it's privilege. Knowledge is privilege, and uh, it's, it's that that it's not really easy in public universities in Greece. So yeah. That's thank you. Else. Sorry. <laughs> no, no. Thank you again. That's a, a fantastic answer, and um, reflected on so much there. And I really liked what you said. Um, saying knowledge sharing is a is a gift, and and we can really see from today how important that interactivity is to facilitate that. Um, so we've got opportunities to be involved in events is now number one. Um, regular communication from Cardiff Met has has stormed up from I think originally it was in fifth now up to up to second. So we've got lots of to reflect on there as part of the Cardiff Met learning community. Um, so in the interest of time, I think we'll move on to the the next one now. We've got a few more interactive bits for you and thank you so much for your feedback so far. So Ruth, I'm just going to hand over to you. So yeah, this is thinking about that idea of community again, um, but now we want to look at the rep community, the community within a community. Um, and as reps, you provide an invaluable service to the universities, to your peers. It's not an easy job. Um, you can be sometimes very much the person in the middle, um, stuck between a rock and a hard place um, and trying to find that sort of mediation point quite often. Um, and I think it's really important that we recognise that today. Um, and as such, we really want to hear about what it's like for you being a rep at Cardiff Metropolitan University. So we've got some questions that we just want you to type or tap away at in a Padlet again. Um, but I think this is one of the areas where we can get a feel for. Is there a strong rep community? Is there a strong TNE rep community? Do you actually feel part of the rep community at Cardiff Metropolitan? Or do you think there's more of a community of reps within your home institution? Um, there's no right or wrong answers as ever, um, but we'd just like you to take a few minutes to reflect on these questions. Um, and as ever, you know, feedback can be good as well as bad, but actually in order to improve, there's, there's an element of we need to know what's not quite working for you guys, particularly with these different methods of learning that we're, we're experiencing at the moment of learning and teaching. So, you know, we're really keen to hear what's really working well for you guys, what's not working quite so well. What would you like to see more of? Would you like to talk more with reps who are based in Cardiff? You know, do you want to hear more about are there similarities between the issues that you come up against versus what they do? Um, so, yeah, we're really, really just keen here for you to tap away, be as honest as you like. No repercussions, obviously. Um, just really just want to make things better, make things easier, 
help you feel like you are part of that community, that you aren't there on a limb, um, you know, just out there on your own doing it. So how, how can we make this community, this rep community especially, better? Um, so if you could take a look at the questions on the Padlet, tap away, and we'll just have a very quick sort of summing up. But this is very much about your feedback, just getting it down there and allowing Sam to take that away to his team and, and help build this for you. So this is this is your chance, it's your big chance to, to, you know, help CMU get this right or writer as the case may be. So off you go. Oh, people have already tapped in. How exciting. So there's some very enthusiastic yeses. Um, can you just explain to us why it's it's nice to get that feedback, but actually um, when help when recruiting for reps, it's really useful to find out why um, you feel that sense of belonging. Um, I think that's it, and it's also good to articulate it for yourself. So if you're trying to recruit support, um, what what? What makes you say that very enthusiastic yes? Would anyone like to come in? Why do you feel like you belong to the rep community? What what specifically made you give that answer? Anyone? I will share mine. Thanks, Alima. Um, basically, uh, it's because before I got into um, Student Advisory Council, I already knew how I can, if I had a problem or I want to contact the administrators, I already knew who's uh, the main person to go to. Um, feeling that I can help people doing that, I can contribute all of these knowledge to people or students in my college to help them in that basis is something that I really like to do, actually. Even though I, if I had like a break and a student just like contact me and they need like to know where to go, I will literally take them. I will just go. Um, so basically, yeah, I am very proud to, to be able to help these people and to feel like they are they're already um, relieved when they finished all of these like confusion they got is amazing. Yeah, I think that's a really common theme amongst reps that I've worked with in the past as well, in terms of that wanting to help and wanting to make things better, uh, wanting to be a bridge. Um, I think also as well, certainly um, recently where I set up a rep structure in a new provider in England, um, there was a definite um, steer towards being able to help shape learning and teaching and the university processes um, and that definite feeling that you do have a voice is really important in that so and that helps you feel part of that Cardiff Met community which is great. What about your interaction with other reps around the world so outside of um, events like today where you get to see people from across the globe um, do you sort of deal with other reps at Cardiff Met? How, how often are you in contact with them? Do you need to be? I mean, that's the other question. If you want to, uh, we did actually collaborate with Qatar, Qatar University. And yeah, I mean, that, that was really pleasant. But I really want to, to do that, that with Cardiff Met. And I'm actually new. So this is, as I said before, this is a new experience. Um, my first collaboration with you guys. So that's that's it. Brilliant. So Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, what about um, 
those of you who've put some improvement, um, someone's put here about more scrutiny of tutors and material delivery. Um, who put that up and, and where's that, you know, how, how do you think that would improve the sense of community where you are or you feeling more of a community with Cardiff Met? Um, who, who put that one that up? That would be me. Um, and in the sense of, I mean, not anything in insanely scrutinous obviously but uh just in the sense that yeah we are uh in our respective countries uh i'm sure that entails what it entails as in it's not the uk environment uh, as we know i mean other countries have their own uh, ways of working uh and going about things um and we've had uh, instances where uh you know a lot of the times uh, some during the lesson it might shift into uh the native tongue for example of the country and uh that's not the best in terms of uh, trying to regard yourself as uh, this place as um a collaborative uh, college with uh cardiff met and it's it's a shame sometimes uh most of the time um and yeah i've i'm i'm in talks with uh the heads of department uh trying to resolve this matter because it's not that pleasant to deal with uh when you're me for example i'm bilingual so like i do speak greek but english is my main language and i did choose this uh college for the fact that um it was english taught uh and uh, it was a kind of met uh, accreditation so that was the key um and coming here and seeing a rather mixed a hybrid of the two is not as pleasant and for some other classmates that i have who are fully english speakers it's not fun at all um and yeah okay. i mean i'm sure there is a, a certain amount of uh scrutiny or like uh m taking a look into this that goes into it already as is but yeah and um, that's pretty much it yeah, I think certainly from sort of the quality side, you know, there's some stuff there that Sam can pick up anyway. But I think um, it's, you know, you sound like you're doing all the right things, but actually it would be useful to know if that happens elsewhere in other countries, for example. So I think that's where this idea of collaboration and you can learn from each other. Um, and it might be a wider problem that Cardiff Met can pick up as a result of that. So that's a way of using that community um, a, a bit more widely. Um, the sign here is put polarizing, a great opportunity for change. Um, is that you again, Georgie? Because it's in the, I don't know, yeah. You're, you're on a controversial stream today, aren't you? This is great, it's great, I love it. Um, but it, it's that opportunity for debate, I'm guessing that's what you're you're getting at there and what was alluded to earlier about the, you know, higher education is about debate. It's OK to have a difference of opinion. Um, and, and that's all right. And learning to be comfortable with that is actually part of being a rep's role. And, and it's a really valuable lesson that will help you as you go forward into um, employment as well. Absolutely. Because we've got the chance to like help shape our our education and the education of the people who uh, precede us. I mean, uh, succeed us. And um, <laughs> It's good. I mean, it's not we're not in high school anymore. Obviously, it's not something preset where you need to follow the rules. And I mean, obviously, we need to follow the rules, but like a, a preset uh, line, you know, for example, that we need to go along. Uh, and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I would say coming from QAA, please do follow some rules because that makes our life a lot easier. Um, Chris, I don't know how to say your name, I'm afraid. Is it? <laughs> it's Crystal Dulaki. It's it's a Greek name. Don't even try it. But my first name. <laughs> I, I really have to agree with Georgie on this one. I think we come from similar backgrounds. We're both studying in Greece. Um, and you know, public Greek public standard mainstream education does not facilitate a debate in 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 a, in a classroom. And so actually people don't really know like other students who come from a Greek educational background, 
even if that's higher education, they don't know how to communicate in that style. You know, have a friendly, uh, constructive debate. Um, and in a um, in a science like psychology, debates are paramount. You can't you cannot have a lecture without having some sort of debate. And unfortunately, due to the you know hybrid learning and the fact that in my in my um, year we're only like two students physically there it's very hard to have a debate most people either will just type a, a slight yes i agree on the chat or um and in fact it's only like three students who uh use their mic it's it's incredibly hard we're 29 students in class and only two of us are in class the rest two of you uh, and i'm not being i'm not being judgmental it's just the fact that the our tutors try their best to engage them but hybrid learning as i said before it's convenient and higher education should not be convenient in the sense that i you know you learn through debate through through you know, collaborative criticism and, and constructive criticism, something <laughs> that I've only experienced with my with my peer in class. And uh, it's 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 a bit sad. Like I'm not I don't want to take it to a personal um, level regarding my my program, but it's sad the fact that we're struggling so much to uh, facilitate this kind of debate that's really needed, especially in my science, because and I will repeat this, it's not it's not a matter of um, you know, the college doing something wrong or the university doing, doing, doing something wrong. It's just the fact that Greeks really do not know how to do it. <laughs> it's like a skill that we have not mastered as Greeks because <laughs> of our uh, Greek educational background. That, I'm so sorry, I blab with someone. No, no, it's absolutely fine. I'm just interested to know if that echoes um, just before we move on. Does that echo with anyone else in other countries, that sort of approach to HE delivery? Can anyone else sort of, or wants to pop something in the chat, for example? Anyone? I, say, hey. I totally agree. Before someone said, I totally agree. Also in golf, we have the same concept in classes. So yeah, I just totally agree with you guys. Yeah, uh, hi. Can I add something? Such a little point. Yeah, I am a bilingual student as well, and the language spoken in my, this country is Arabic, which I don't speak. And I, I think it's pretty normal when an um, Omani teacher is teaching you, you know, they switch their languages for a while. But the best part is that they make sure that the international students or the students in the class, at the end of the day, they do understand what the lecture was about. And even if they make that switch, I mean, we can't uh, always blame them for a little switch that they make because it's natural i feel like so i think the best thing is at the end of the day we understand what the lecture was and everything uh, you know uh, there's there not, nothing there's no misunderstanding in between us so yeah that's interesting just to hear a bit of you know how it's how it's approached in uh, somewhere else um uh, is that guardy Gar i'm really sorry i'm terrible yeah. pronunciation Apologies. <laughs> An Arab uh, letter, Ghadi. So um, I wanted to reflect on something, um, uh, something new. So I feel like um, I'm a representative um, uh, in my local, uh, in my local university, in my local campus. So I, uh, I really, I really uh, feel, uh, feel like. Um, uh, sensing Cardiff, like um, in the online library, like in. Um, and all the material, all all the the assignments we do in the British style, but uh, we really need more. We re really need more uh, in Lebanon because uh, after all of uh, the problems, uh, the higher education got a real hit in uh, uh, in the level. So we are learning in a lower level, and we need more from uh, international institutions like Cardiff. Uh, here uh, to help us maybe in uh, exchange students maybe and uh, maybe can Sam uh, help us in uh, in this matter and uh, make our voice heard so uh, from uh, from my uh, colleagues and my university we we need more uh, i don't know if uh, this is the case everywhere but uh, uh, in lebanon uh, that's the case so uh, uh, th that's my opinion 
and uh, sorry for my English, but I am uh, originally French educated uh, and uh, I'm trying to cope with you guys. I've, I've got to be honest, like all of your, all of you speak brilliantly. Um, I don't speak any other language. I'm almost ashamed to say. Um, so, no, I am ashamed to say. I'm not even almost ashamed. I am completely ashamed that I don't. Um, I do do a bit of Cockney rhyming slang every now and then, but I don't think that really counts. So, but thank you. You've all communicated. Please don't apologise for your English. Um, it's absolutely brilliant. Thank you. Sorry, I'm just reading in a chat something else. Um, yeah, is, is this ongoing um, chat about the, the language and the switching between um, languages, which I, I think Sam can probably take up um, after the after the event. I think we probably need to move on, do we, Holly, now? Um, that's been super valuable. Thank you very, very much. Yes, thank you so much for all of your your input. Um, we've just got one one thing left to do on today's um, presentation. So I've been really privileged the past few years to have attended this event. I attended last year and the year before. Um, and every year we've asked very similar questions to these at the end of the session. So just finding out from you what the benefits of being a partner student rep at Cardiff Metropolitan University are and what the challenges are. And I think we've already touched on some of this throughout today, um, but so we can sort of see how we're progressing year on year and if there's any similar challenges or similar benefits coming up year on year at this event that we can address that in future. So this is the, the, the final activity for today and your engagement has been absolutely fantastic. It's been a real privilege to have these conversations with you. So, um, here is just the last one um, with the Mentimeter. You can pop that code in and just type in a couple of words or phrases of the benefits of being a partner student rep at Cardiff Met and then some of the challenges as well. And as I said, we've we've touched on this in some of the other activities, but if there are any final thoughts that you want to share um, with Ruth, myself and Sam, we'd be really grateful um, just to do this to round off the session. So I'll give you a, a few moments to to do this. Okay, we've got some good things so far. Remember, if you agree with anyone and, and or if, if something's up there that you want to add, just pop it in again and the, the words will get bigger. And we'll see what's the most popular. We've got sharing experience at first as the first one. Professional development and personal development we've got. What international experience has come through again like it did on the previous one. OK, so we've got personal development as one that's come out really, really big. Um, I think we've, we've touched on that quite a lot already today. Um, the same with international experience. If anyone would like to tell us now why they've put in whatever phrase they have for this question, you're you're very welcome to. Go for it. I can see a hand. 
but I can't see where. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Uh, so I put personal and professional development and Fantastic. learning. Um, I think those really described my journey as a student rep because I I really got the chance to develop a skill that I thought I didn't have, um, which really felt me really made me feel uh, inferior being in science like psychology and not being able to, you know, develop these uh, interpersonal skills that I actually should have. Um, and it so, something that I didn't add was collaboration, not just in the context of, um, you know, in I think okay, like conflict management as a student rep has been the most important skill that I had to develop. First, first, first of all, because not all my communication and collaborations with my peers were exactly friendly from their end. Uh, so there was a lot of uh, conflict management tactics that I had to implement. Uh, something that really, really developed my personal and professional development because it was something that I never thought I'd, I'd actually do. Uh, you know, be in that position where um, there is a heated moment uh, with another person that I have to neutralize um, and act as, you know, the equilibrium between the two ends. Um, so I think, and I think m most of us will agree on this, we did develop some skills we thought we wouldn't, or we developed some, we developed some skills that we already had, but they were not as good before. At least that's, that's in my case, um, because in Greece, we don't have the, you know, culture and the idea of uh, what a student representative, there's, there's a there's a class president in maybe high school, but uh, not really taken seriously. So the idea of student representative in Greece was 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 something weird for for Greek students with a Greek educational background. Um, so they didn't really take it seriously as well. Um, so they they treated our communication with a bit of hostility, a bit of um, a bit of humor, which was not the right ground. You know the right you know, treatment, um, not not because they were targeted to me personally, but because it's it, it, it is something that in other countries it's valued and it's a key part of education and, and classroom, um, you know, chemistry and 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 balance. Uh, so for me, developing these skills was really important because interacting with Greek students is tricky. <laughs> um, Again, I blabbered on. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I think that's a really good point you made about personal development and skills because when you when you graduate and finish with that award, it's not just about those skills that you've gained from studying for a psychology degree. It's also about all the other skills you've gained and many of those will have come through your role as a, a student rep. So thank you for, for sharing that. Um, Halima, you have your hand up. Yeah, um, basically, I agree to following up to her words. I actually, we actually hear also in Oman, um, some students think that um, student representative are same as student affairs. So it's a bit like this session actually gave me like some ideas to enhance and to give like ideas to make people think that we're actually students for students, and we can help you without you going to student affairs sometimes. That's it. Um, uh, also, I, I wrote actually sharing the experience, which is I got um, I got to know that they're um, in Greece. They they have the similar thing here at Gulf countries. So that's cool. <laughs> we have the same ideas, um, and also seeing um, that the different perspective got me to just like pull some ideas to do them here in Oman. So I'm really flattered. Thank you. That's it. Thank you so much. And it, it it's really good to hear that you've got some ideas from today. Uh, that's more than we could have asked for for this session um, to, to take back and, and try with, with 
students at your um, institution. And I think what you said about um, finding similarities across the countries where you're studying, hopefully after today, you can keep up these connections and, and share approaches um, and have conversations like we've had today and see if you can support each other within the rep community. So in the interest of time, I'm just gonna move to the next slide and see what we had for the challenges of being a partner student. And so far on my screen, we've just got two things, which is transferring information to cohorts and being good enough to help. But I have to say, I think you've all, you're all fantastic reps um, from the conversations we've had today. Um, does any does anyone want to expand on those points that are on the on the slide before we finish? They were Maybe. both uh, my um, in. I both added those. Um, and I mean, sure, it's 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 just a small, slight challenge for me to be able to like uh, accurately convey. Um, I just have difficulty summarizing some things up sometimes, you know, so like when once I leave here and I go back to my uh, college mates, uh, I'll, they'll be like, oh, what happened? Then I'll be like, oh, I, I mean, we talked, <laughs> we, we discussed, we tried to solve the issues, uh, but um, I'm just, it's just my little um, nuances of my own character, you know, that kind of thing. And the same as being good enough to help. Uh, I mean, I'm not Obviously, I don't think I'm uh, the ideal um, class rep, but I strive to be as good as I can personally be. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's just slight challenges, which I'm uh, hoping to overcome uh, day by day, obviously. Yeah. I think that those are um, you were saying about summarizing information for, for students. There can be so many different ways um, to do those. So I think perhaps there's some feedback there you could that Sam maybe you could take forward in terms of supporting you as reps of different methods to convey that information to other students because it's not necessarily about you summarizing the information it's also how it's received so for some students they might prefer to have information given to them face to face someone else might prefer to read a summary um, someone else might prefer another method so um, these are skills that you're you're practicing all the time, and it, it sounds like you have already have a brilliant relationship with your with your cohort. Um, and I have no doubt that they are very appreciative of of everything that you do to to represent them. Ruth, Ruth, right, you just, might, we, you might be yeah, on sorry, you. I've just everything flashed up on my screen at once there. Um, it's just talking about um, one thing that did strike me, um, particularly working at my previous institution, was reps articulating those skills that they've learned once they leave uni. Um, so whether you keep a log of your activities, whether Cardiff Met could give you some form of formal recognition for your um, services of, as reps. So one, one practice that I initiated, and this is just an idea, um, was each rep would pick the skills and attributes that they gained from being a rep that year and they got formal recognition from the institution for those specific skills um, just to help you add to your portfolios or your CV just to give you an aid memoir as you move forward into employment as to the skills that you've actually gained and they are very um, specific um, you know, as a rep, like you say, you, you're not going to be you're not going to need to do mediation as a regular student um, or at least hopefully you don't too much. Um, so I think it's just do absolutely keep a log of your skills and the attributes that you've gained whilst being a rep, even if it's just for a year or a term or in a meeting. Um, do, do sort of keep that personal learning record there because there'll be skills above and beyond those that you get from those formal qualifications that you get. So it's just sort of a, a final tip really from me um, just to say, you know, don't lose this. Don't, don't, um, don't sort of gloss over what you do now and how that can benefit you in the future. And I think just to uh, agree with Ruth, if, if you're not 
confident identifying the skills, just keep a record of the things that you're doing, because I'm sure you'll find when you talk with your academic tutors or you talk with other reps or you talk with somebody like Sam and say, you know, I've I've taken this feedback on on board and this is the change that's happened. We can help you infer what those skills are so you can take them forwards in future. So I'm just going to do a final call if anyone would like to talk about anything else that's on the slide before we finish. OK, in that case, um, Ruth, I th oh, no, we have a hand. We have a hand. <laughs> go on, go for it. Yeah, I'm I'm that kind of person. <laughs> um, I, I just like to touch upon the fact that um, something that I think is missing, um, although it, it's it's very natural, because I added cultural communication barriers and mm -hmm. feelings of inferiority. I didn't want those to be targeted to um, our institutions, but mostly the fact that uh, I think we need to sort of see how we can like begin in, in, in the beginning of every program. I think there should be um, a student representative uh, from either the past years or or someone to explain the role in because mm -hmm. it, it's not it's not really recognized in Greece so that that it that makes our our job hard in the sense that um, people who actually need help really don't come to us because they don't take us seriously okay. uh, because they're really affected by everyone else in the group um, I, I've, I've had instances where um, I I get I'd get phone calls because most of us live in Greece, so it, it's pretty easy for them to find my phone, my phone number. So they, they, I've, I've had instances where I'd get phone calls of student students panicking and, 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 and telling me that I had no other choice but to call you. And I, I it really made me feel like, but that was that was one of your choices. It's not mm -hmm. I had no other choice. It yeah. should have been your first choice since it's targeted towards your it's 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 university related. It's pr program yeah. related. It, I should be the one to talk. If you're not feeling comfortable to go to your tutors about it, come to me. But I was treated like sort of the the last option. Like I, I had no other option but to call you. And that is because it it was not made clear to them that I am here to help. I'm here okay. to offer whatever skills I have to help yeah. them. Uh, I, I will not obviously take the role of their tutors in 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 no sense in no sense at all. But um, I understand the feeling of not being able to, especially due to the digital barriers. You know, not having the confidence or maybe the feeling of safety to talk to your tutors in that way. But I'm I'm a student. I'm 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 with you. You know, and that is not something that it is understood in Greece. So I think in countries that maybe struggle with this, we could have, you know, at the beginning of every program, at the beginning of every year, um, sort of uh, like a workshop or uh, yeah. something for them to understand that we are here to help. Uh, yeah. Because I don't say this lightly when they don't take us seriously. They don't. <laughs> um, and because I've studied abroad uh, and I've lived my whole entire life abroad, it's not the same. Um, it's not the same, you know, they, they take roles like this seriously. I, I was in, I lived in Abu Dhabi for most of my life. Um, uh, and the schools I went there were mostly international. And what is missing from Greece is that sort of the international air of, uh, I, I think, how things are done. Okay. I'm so sorry. I I think I've uh, I'm so sorry, but so that I is. Need to apologize. <laughs> I think what you've made a really um, interesting point because Ruth just put something in the chat about induction, and I think there's something there in terms of a an awareness raising campaign of what the role of a student rep is, um, who they are, and how they can support students. And I think that's really fundamental to the feedback that you've just given us. Is students need to recognise that student reps are there to support them like we talked about today improving the quality of that academic experience and recognizing that as an appropriate channel for them to go and speak to somebody um so i think there's something in there that that we can certainly take away from today thank you very much for for sharing that
Thank you for your time. Um, to touch upon the, the question one last uh, bit. Um, yes, not in every institution, especially not in public ones. But the problem with with my year of studies is that we very abruptly transitioned from a week of physical learning in my first year to all digital uh, with the second wave of lockdown. So I think uh, it, it, there was a brief in, in induction phase, but a very brief one. Um, I think it, it could have been a bit longer in the sense it could have we could have dedicated um, half a lecture or so yeah. to that. Uh, but um, I don't really blame them. It was a very hard transition um, because we had a week uh, of physical lectures and the next week we went into lockdown and everything had to be sort of um, changed all over again. But we could have spent more time you know, to work on that. Thank you again. <laughs> no, no, thank thank you. Um, I did see a hand flash up and it's disappeared. So I'm going to invite yes. this mysterious hand to, to speak. Uh, I just wanted to say that uh, in my case, we have the totally opposite problem. So uh, apparently in Greece, no one talks to the student representative <laughs> in Lebanon. Uh, the student representative uh, does uh, do everything. So okay. we are IT, we are uh, everything, everything. So uh, apparently uh, after yesterday's sessions, we had a uh, clear vision of our duties, what we have to do and uh, what we don't have to do, what we have to assign to some to somebody else. Because, you know, students tend, tend uh, to think that Oh, he's a student representative. So mm -hmm. uh, yes, whatever question I have, whatever issue I have, along everything in the whole university, I need to to ask him. Uh, but uh, I I'm not responsible for academics. I'm not responsible for for IT, you know. So um, we have that problem uh, here in our campus. Thank you. Thank you for sh for sharing that. Um, okay. Um, I think. Sam, I don't know if you have anything to add, but I think we'll we'll draw this session to a close. I've been typing away really <laughs> particularly there to try and get as much of what's been gathered here today. And um, I've got a lot to take um, away from this, particularly the, the last couple of slides and some more candid conversation about your experiences at different institutions across some similar, some very different. Um, so if you don't mind, is, is it all right if I just read out what I've got just so that you're happy from what for me to take this across and for your voice to be acted upon? Um, because there's no point of these sessions unless student feedback loop is closed and um, we try to enhance that experience for you as a result of these sessions. Um, so what I've got from this and hopefully I'll, I'll, I'll try and keep it within five minutes is interactive and collaborative learning is important for you. Um, in terms of your experience across, but there's also significant value of face to face interactions and those informal learning environments as well, um, which happens on campus and off campus, but some in places not particularly in your lecture theatre and or online. Um, what you could and what we should be doing as a, as a students union is direct training from Cardiff Met. You had um, a session yesterday based on the rep training and what we got from that was a clear understanding of what your roles and responsibilities are and um, hopefully and we, sh we should be doing that earlier I think um, if you would have had that at the start your roles more interaction from us and um, you know the some of the challenges that you may have had would have been a little bit easier um, I think could could have been uh, something that we improve on as an organization um, what I've got from you is studying a UK degree can be quite difficult due to uh, the native language which is um, some of it goes into UK, some of it goes into your own um, own languages across the world. If you study a UK degree, it should be taught in British. Is that what we're this is what we're we're collecting from that? It's very difficult to continue with that as as you have made aware due to the cultural differences, etc. But you are studying a UK degree, um, and the quality needs to be mirrored across uh, across the UK. Um, what you've got though, um, things like this is um, in terms of the partner events helpful for you um, to develop a sense of belonging and identity to Cardiff meant as well as your own institution. So if you're studying an ICBT um, you, you also identify with ICBT, but on a more grand scale, 
you've got a UK degree and you are a, a Cardiff Met student. So having that identity to Cardiff Met is, is, is important for you as well. Um, I really like this win, the importance of the social cultural context. And that's this type of um, conversation here. Um, whereas that probably is missing sometimes across the higher education context. And it's bringing them both in together to try to, you know, to get that context together in order for you to get that voice across as best as possible. Um, and that again, looks at learning environments and the importance of those face-to-face -face interactions as well as informal learning environments. We've got perspectives can be similar. So, you know, Greece, Oman, very similar in what we have but very different in, in other places like, you know, in Lebanon where the, the roles are very different, but perspectives and cultures can be similar, but also are very different as well. And um, one thing that we need to look at is conflict management for reps and how you deal with conflict management. I think that's not something that is, you know, um, said on the tin, as we say in Britain, and that's something that you can, can encounter. And you've highlighted there the importance of reflection and action where you've dealt with that yourself and used your own initiative. But that's, that could be something that we support you with better um, coming across from that. Um, skills and attributes, how you pick out the skills and attributes that you have developed as a student representative in order to either A, go into employability and B, uh, postgraduate study and or further study across the world, whether you wanted to come to us. I think we can be better in highlighting those skills and attributes in order to really um, focus it to the context and where you're looking to go in the future and i think we can certainly do that and pinpoint that transfer of, uh, of those things we have a really critically reflective set of reps and some of the conversation that we've had today has been fantastic um, and it's only through these events that we're getting that and i think we need more of this in order to to really pinpoint your views and how we can better our practice in the uk as well um, we need to communicate better the rep structure and how you feed into Cardiff Met as a rep um, from your own institutions. And I think we can be better through that as well. And um, what I'm trying to get across is the greater engagement from us and that whether, whether that be not just induction, because that's not enough. Um, and it's throughout the whole because induction is an ongoing process. It's a transition through each year and beyond. It's not just that one week or two week. It's ongoing. Um, and I think we can be better at communicating with you and also being there for you throughout those problems and also the, also the successes as well. Um, we've also looked at the transition from the physical to online was very challenging. That's reflective of, the, of Cardiff as well and for staff. That was really tough. Um, some of it we've had to develop ourselves in terms of those digital competencies. We had to learn how to use Teams. We had to learn how to engage on uh, using chat reactions and stuff like that mentimeters polls and we're still doing that today and that's that that's not just a student thing that's a staff thing as well and we've all done well to be able to to deal with those pressures and those challenges but probably more from an it and library perspective as well um, and that's one of the sessions that we're going to look at uh, tomorrow which hopefully you can join us for um greater engagement from our uk reps to collaborate with our with our tne reps I think, and that that could be learning about practice because there's I've picked up some fantastic practice that you do, and with that could be certainly shared with our UK reps and vice versa, and um, so that you feel more a part of our community, rep representation community, and kind of met as a whole. Um, oh, yeah, you're on mute. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And then um, that was highlighted in some of the talk there as well, particularly from Greece, where only three students are attending sessions and it's difficult to pick up that voice. Um, and I think that really reiterates some of the challenges. But is that in a nutshell, that's not really a nutshell because it was 10 minutes worth, but um, worth of feedback that I can take forward? Um, did, did that capture some of the stuff that you, you mentioned to me today? Oh, I froze now as well. Yeah, I think I think Sam, just the point that um, Gaddy made right at the end there about the boundaries mm -hmm. within reps operation. Um, that's a really important one to convey across your training. Um, yeah. So it's it's just that you know how how do reps sort of cope with that sort of I don't know you're a rep of your course or something like that, and someone comes to you with with quite a personal problem i know that was certainly experienced by reps i've worked with in the past so yeah, yeah. i think um just that you know how do you manage those boundaries is a, is a really useful 
useful one to cover as well. But that was a great summary. Well done. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it wasn't really a summary. It was more of a uh, like a, an essay, <laughs> wasn't it, really? But there we go. Um, no, it, that just shows how vital these sessions are for us developing you and developing us as well. So um, it works both ways, and that's the beauty of co-production. So, yeah. I was just going to say to round off, it's been a real um, privilege meeting you all today and thank you so much for engaging with us. Um, I think that Kieran has the slides. Um, the Mentimeter links will last for 48 hours, so I think they will close tomorrow evening. So if anyone, if you if you go away today and you suddenly have a thought um, of any of the polls we've done, you can go in and, and, and add your thoughts still. Um, I can see a hand. Halima, would you like to come in? Um, uh, can I just suggest we're all uh, to like add their emails or something like this so we can collaborate maybe in the future? Just like a comment, you know, in the chat. That's it. Fantastic. Thanks, Halima. I think that's a great idea. Ruth, I think you were going to jump in. No, just to say thank you and um, it's been it's brightened my week up definitely uh, thank you so much especially for your enthusiastic engagement um on early well early for us but um but thank you so much for for just embracing the session in the spirit in which it was intended but thank you so much i think cardiff met is very lucky to have such good and engaged reps actually so yeah brilliant thank you yeah i couldn't agree more um Okay, I think I think Sam is is uh, lost in the internet somewhere. <laughs> um, but th thank you so much, everyone today. And I think people started putting their email addresses in the chat. So if that's something that you want to do, please do. And um, you can contact Sam, Ruth, or myself. Mine and Ruth's information is on the slides now, and it will be in the slides when they're circulated to you as well. So. Thank you very much, everyone, and uh, enjoy no, it's, the rest of your thank event. Thank you, guys, because uh, I think keep doing this for more generations and uh, just to feel them like secure because Cardiff Met is uh, they care about the students all over the world. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. OK, thanks. So I think I've just got back in now. Um, I think it was a, that's a great way of, um, of booting someone out, isn't it? Um, to, for, for lasting too long. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was great. But um, I'll send. If you don't have the links for the rest of the week, I will send the links across to you via your emails, um, and I'll do that straight away. Um, Georgia, you in particular, because you signed up um, today. But um, thank you um, on behalf of me as well, and thank you to Ruth and Holly for delivering such a wonderful session as well. It really has captured the. The voice and all of your experiences and how we can push this forward to develop the rep structure across the world and um, and, and make you feel a part of Cardiff Met as a collective. So um, expect to hear from me very shortly um, and I'll see you again um, tomorrow. But thank you all. Again. We um, really do appreciate you being a part of this. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Take care. Take care. Take care. All.